Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, I want to talk about nosocomial infections, also known as healthcare associated infections. So I still call them nosocomial infections. Nosocomial is Latin for hospital, but healthcare associated infections is going to be the term you hear more often. And that's because these are infections that you get while you're receiving treatment in a healthcare facility or really anywhere for that matter. So you can't really call them hospital acquired infections like they did for a while because this could be a physical therapist clinic, a surgery center, in-home healthcare can actually lead to nosocomial or healthcare associated infections. So just think that infection you get while you're receiving care for some other condition. All right, so why do they matter? And then we'll talk about why they're so powerful. So number one, um, even though we have infection control committees, we do our best. I mean, you guys as healthcare students, you know about sterile fields and taking proper precautions and hand washing and all these things. There are still 2 million nosocomial infections per year, leading to 20,000 or more deaths per year. So actually at this point, um, nosocomial infections are the eighth leading cause of death. So let's look at um, why these microbes are so uh, dangerous and then we'll talk about where they happen and which ones are the most common and which ones are the most deadly. So we have uh, this is a Venn diagram I made to describe this. So you see number one, the microbes in the healthcare environment. Number two, we have compromised hosts. And number three, we have a chain of transmission. So let's look at all three and see how this is what leads to these healthcare associated infections. Excuse me. Number one, the microbes. So think about a microbe that is living in a hospital. Number one, it may have been, it may have already been a scary microbe because it made somebody sick and brought them to a healthcare environment or, or like a hospital. But also think of what it's been through. It's had quats thrown at it, maybe UV light, right? Bleach, all sorts of different things. So if you're still alive and you live in a hospital room or a, sur or a surgery center or something like that. You are tough, right? You are you are the fittest. You're the survivor. So think number one, tough microbes. Number two, we have weak hosts, compromised hosts. So think about the people that are receiving health care. Uh, generally, they're immunocompromised, either really young or really old, right? If you're really young, you don't have a mature immune system. If you're really old, it's starting to weaken. Uh, maybe you're having, having surgery. Uh, obviously, maybe you need uh, something put into your body, like a catheter, an IV catheter, a respiratory apparatus, whatever it might be. Uh, maybe you have a burn. Uh, maybe you're immunocompromised because you're pregnant. Maybe you have cancer. You're undergoing chemotherapy. I, th I think you get the point. So you have really tough microbes in, in, in weak people, right? Compromised people. So that's bad enough. And then number three, we have the chain of transmission. So this is one where I always think back, I don't remember the specifics, but I remember on, on a show uh, called House a few years ago, there were a baby was, uh, at least one baby died. Others got really sick and they couldn't figure out what was happening, ended up being a volunteer in this hospital was delivering little teddy bears to newborn babies and she was spreading. She was basically like the typhoid Mary of the gift shop. So think about all the people that come into your hospital room or all the people you come into contact with when you're receiving health care. So uh, even in home health care, where, um, where was your provider right before they came to see you? What might they have brought with them? These types of things. But So think about um, people bringing food, um, pastors and priests coming into the room, your, your family and friends, doctors, nurses, techs, everyone. So all these people could potentially be carrying microbes around. Think about the people that made your food. People Think about the people that uh, you know put together your floral arrangements and all these kind of things. So um, I think you get the point. So really tough microbes, weak hosts, and microbes being carried and moved all throughout the healthcare setting. So this is why we have microbes that are capable of leading to these nosocomial infections. Um, so as far as like, let's talk about most common and most dangerous, most deadly real quickly, but the, the actual microbes change. It bounces back and forth from things like staph and C. diff and, and strep. Uh, uh, Pseudomonas is a big one now. So the individual microbes, uh, they're, they're going to change, but uh, the most common cause of nosocomial infections is going to be catheters. So think urinary tract infections from, uh, from, from urinary catheters, uh, bacteremia from intravenous catheters. So that I, I, when you put those two together, they are the most common cause of nosocomial infections. Then of course you have surgical site infections. That makes a lot of sense. You just cut a hole into someone. Uh, there's, a, there's a really good chance that microbes are going to get in. Um, gastrointestinal ones as well. Like you see like C. diff infections and other GI infections are now becoming very common. So, as, but as far as most common, think um, catheters, think UTIs, blood-borne infections from catheters. 
Um, most deadly, highest mortality rate, that's going to be your lower respiratory infections like pneumonia. So um, I think that's pretty much all you have to know about these nosocomial infections. It's your job and your clinical training um, to learn how to control these infections and hopefully keep them from happening. But that's what they are and that's how they came to be. All right. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.